OpenAI's new model came out yesterday and I want to go over it with an actual coding example. In short, it's quite impressive and no other models have been able to do it in this fashion. So I'm going to jump into it real quick and I'm going to give a brief rundown on what problem I'm trying to have it solve. So I have an audiobook maker interface right here, which is 1100 lines of code. And I want to refactor this because I've come across new methods for organizing my code and I want to convert it into model view controller MVC. So just quickly, I'm going to run the code and you're going to see a GUI pop up here where I can make audiobook makers with all the AI voice stuff that I've been covering on my channel. You can load existing audiobooks, continue making audiobooks, so on and so forth. Not going to go over the entire functionality, but I want to refactor this code. And so in order to do that, what you have to do is take all of the code that I have here inside of one ginormous class and then split that into three different Python files so that the controller Python file module is the one that is sending all of these signals between the model, which holds all of the functionality, and then the view, which has all of the interface stuff and making sure that all of that is synchronized. And that requires refactoring quite a bit of code. So hopping over into O1 preview right here, um, I'm going to start off with the prompt that I gave it. So it's this right here. I have the following code that is a PySide 6 GUI that I would like you to refactor into MVC. It should be broken down into three modules, controller model, and then view.py. Functionality should stay the same. I just want to split it into three modules to maintain more modularity. Please start with building the view Py first in one generation. Then we will continue with each following that you make sure to have enough space to write the code completely and fully. So I had originally tried to do this for zero shot to see if it would be able to do all of it in uh, one prompt, but it ran out of space and started telling me to write my own code and to fill in the modules myself. Um, so I ended up splitting it into three. So not exactly zero shot, but let's go ahead and continue. So I gave it all of the code, 1100 lines of code, and it started by thinking for about 104 seconds. And the way that it thinks is actually quite um, interesting. It references itself as I'm and then it'll go through um, and kind of figure out the process that it needs to go through in order to build the or respond to my user request. And so I won't read through all of this. If you do want to pause and take a look at the thought process here, um, you are free to do so. Um, and this took about 104 seconds of thinking and it spit out a view.py. Now I'll go down to the next prompt that I gave it. All right, now let's build model. This one thought for five seconds and then let's build controller.py. This one thought for 49 seconds. So this was tying together model and view um, to make sure all of these signals are connected and we'll check this out inside of the code here. So I am going to head over into the controller for 01 preview and we're going to run this code. So if I run this, I'm going to get the exact same GUI that I was met with with um, my original code, which is right here. And I tested this and 95% of the functionality worked as it should, which is crazy because it just refactored all of that code, um, organized it as it needed to, to get this working. And there was only one caveat with it. And that was, um, so almost everything works. There are a few key issues. The sentences don't populate into the table after the generation of the sentence is created. And then the audio playback doesn't work. And so it was able to take this and then fix it by giving me the whole files once again. And then what I ended up doing was, um, I continued a long line to make sure it better adheres to MVC, but I won't go through all of this because before this, it had completed all of the refactoring that was needed. So basically this took four prompts and less than 10 minutes. I had refactored the entire code base uh, from one giant class into model view controller for this GUI. And now I'm going to take a look at how the other models from OpenAI have performed. So let's now head over into some of the other ones. And the first one that I'm going to go over is Omni. So GPT-4 O Omni. And I followed up with the exact same prompt. It should have the same token window, which is 128K. And we'll scroll down to the output. And so it says, here's the view.py. And so I did the same process. I asked it for view, then controller, then model. And as I was going through this, I could already tell that it was going to fail 
because there it did not, it did not include a, a lot of the functionality. It skipped over a lot of the methods that um, were inside of that class, and it didn't even give me an option to enter the script. So it didn't give me a main.py to run or anything like that. So I had to ask it for that, and then um, I got an error, and then it fixed the error, and then I just gave up because that was the extent that I knew Omni uh, could work at. And so we'll take a quick look at that real quick with the code here. So if I run this GUI right here, I'm going to get something that is uh, a little bit different. You guys probably aren't going to be able to tell the differences, but there is no menu bar up here. The generation doesn't actually work. Selecting text file is weird. And then the, uh, the way the GUI expands in this area is off as well. Whereas if we take a look at the um, preview model here, everything stays static and doesn't uh, size to the height of the window. You got your menu bar, all of that good stuff. So now let's take a look at um, 01 Mini. And this is the Mini model of 01 Preview. And this one did much better than Omni, but it's still lacking. It wasn't able to give me a fully working example. And then so same thing, um, I asked it to build the those three Python modules and it ran, but I got an error, which was due to omitting a specific um, piece of functionality, which was to disable some of the buttons when the audiobook is generating. And so it fixed that error and gave me all of the details around it. And then it also changed a little bit of the functionality, which I had to go and tell it um, that there are some glaring differences between the original code and what um, it's given me. And I had to explain to it what the what the functionality is that I was looking for. And I didn't continue prompting after that. Um, but we'll take a quick look at what that one gave me. And this so it's not bad, but um, it doesn't exactly work as it should. There are a little bit of uh, bugs with it. Like if I select a text file to gen generate an audiobook off of um, and there's no book name, it doesn't actually do anything. So I had to make a book name and then it'll start giving me some prompts. Um, this is this functionality is is uh, different from the original um, UI and then I can play the audio. He did have his wallet in his pocket and setting aside the fact. And so that works. Um, most of the functionality works here, but some of the way that the functionality works differs from the original code that is um, not breaking, but it's stuff that I'd have to go in and manually change or um, use more prompts in order to prompt the model to, to change and give me what exactly I'm looking for. So the impressive thing is that 01 preview did all of that without really having me to reprompt it in order to accomplish um, what I wanted to achieve. So this is actually the code that I will be using to go forward with my audiobook maker. It's very interesting that the model was able to handle um, all of that code and understand where it needed to connect all of these signals. And so I'm quite excited to get more access to this model as I, I want to build a lot of different tools that I just don't have the time for. And I think this is going to be able to speed up my time by many factors um, in order to create what I am imagining. So there is an interesting issue though. Um, <laughs> As I started continuing more along the original 01 preview prompt, it started telling me that my request was flagged as potentially violating the usage policy. And I wasted like four prompts trying to get past this. So this was an Omni one, so that doesn't count. Um, but it got flagged each time. So I'm not sure exactly why it got flagged. Maybe that's a bug. Um, but then I got a, a scary email from OpenAI that says, you may lose access to 01 preview if you continue trying to prompt our model. And so maybe they got to fix that. But um, hopefully that is not a glaring issue when trying to do code. Maybe I gave it too much, but um, I hope that doesn't become an issue for future prompts to where it uh, denies many of these requests. But just some other things that I was going over with the 01 preview model. So um, I was running into some issues with freezing. And so so I need to be able to solve these issues. So I worked through with the uh, model on refactoring some of the code. 
And it helped me to add this little bit of functionality, which was to change how audio playback is working for regenerating sentences. And so if you want to stop and uh, read what conditions I had for it that I wanted it to build, feel free to do so. Um, but it was able to help me implement this into the code without me having to really do much. And I did have to track down an issue, but I think it's an issue with PySide 6, not necessarily uh, chat GPT. So I found that issue, told the model that this needed to be done, um, and then gave it a little bit of my observation so that it uh, doesn't, so that it's able to implement this into the code correctly. Um, and then this is where I started getting issues, but I was able to recontinue in a new chat in order to actually get this functionality added. So yeah, I didn't have to do that myself. I just simply <laughs> gave the, uh, the model the entire code and it was able to figure out and refactor those areas, which is, uh, which is pretty cool, pretty awesome. And yeah, so that's going to be it for today's video. I did want to have a weekly uh, video where I, you know, covered some other stuff that I'm working on, but this model came out yesterday and I thought that, well, I need to cover this model um, because it's pretty fantastic. So that is uh, replacing that video for now, but I might come out with one over the weekend on some other things I've been working on. What you just saw was the audiobook maker. And so if you've been following my channel, I will be refactoring and implementing style TTS and some new features into the audiobook maker so that it's more robust and can make better audiobooks. So expect more videos in the future about the audiobook maker. Um, I'm back to it, to developing it. So yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll be awesome. And, um, you know, once again, as always, I'd like to thank all the members of my channel for supporting me very much appreciate it. There's more and more of you guys every single day. So thank you so much for supporting me and using my packages, giving me feedback and, um, yeah, I, I like working with you guys. So, so keep asking me questions, but, um, that's going to be it for today's video and I'll see you guys later.